everybody is thinking, I am American, I am Indian, I am European, I am Australian, I am cat, I am dog, I am this, I am that, body. We have to cleanse this bodily conception of that I am not this body. Aang Brahmasmi, I am spirit soul. This you have to realize. So let's see what Prabhupada has put in the purport. When an embodied living entity is hurt by fatal weapons, it is to be known that the living entity within the body is not killed. So Prabhupada is bringing a very deep point out here. That is the soul really prone to karma? Is the soul getting reactions for karma? Because we see the soul is not acting. It's through the consciousness of the body the soul is getting results. But nothing directly is happening to the soul. <laughs> the soul is within the body. But by the desires of the mind, by the desires, the millions and millions of past life desires that come up in the mind, that which is strong, that which becomes more self-serving, becomes the dominant desire. And the mind looks at all the desires and says, which one can I get pleasure from? From this one, from that one, from this one, from that one. And there's a, whole, and there's a million desires coming at one time. So the mind then chooses one. <laughs> and as soon as the mind chooses one, he gets attached to that desire. Oh, this one is nice. I like to, I like to explore this desire. As he gets attached to the idea of that desire, then the intelligence kicks in. Then the intelligence comes in and the intelligence says, Oh, you want to fulfill this desire? You think this desire is good? And then the intelligence says, I'll help you plan how we can get this desire. And as the intelligence plans with the mind, then the super soul, hmm? Upadrista Anumanta. And the mind says, yes, 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 I want it. And the intelligence says, well, I thought about it and it seems to be... And the intelligence says, well, I think it's okay. And then the super soul says, tadastu. Okay, let it be. Now when the soul has partnered with the bewildered intelligence and is ready to receive the reactions of that desire, then the super soul connects with the other mechanisms of time, namely the universal administration, the angels and the demigods, and says, okay, give it to them. And when that is sanctioned, then gradually within the duration of time, that desire that we had gradually becomes manifest. And now on the manifest level, whatever the results is, is based on your responsibility. <laughs> what you desire, the Lord just sanctions it. So now according to that, we start incurring karma. And that we'll discuss in the fifth chapter. When we're discussing the fifth chapter, there's three kinds of karma that come there. Karma, akkarma and vikarma. So good choices sanctioned by the Lord becomes karma or good activity. Bad choices sanctioned by the Lord becomes vikarma. And no karmic reaction, akkarma, that is also sanctioned by the Lord, but that is Krishna consciousness. Where one is acting in this world, is doing everything, but he's not getting any material reaction because he's working as dhira, he's working directly under the control of the Supreme Lord. So that's a very powerful state to be. So we can see how easily it is for us to become illusioned. So the misconception is not of karma, the misconception is of our illusion. When the mind is making the choice to act on a certain desire, how are you choosing that? How are you choosing that desire? On what basis are you choosing that desire? Therefore, Krishna consciousness or the Aryan culture trains one to purify one's desires. It's saying you've got millions of desires, choose the right ones. Because of the result of that will be binding. And if you're not thinking about that, then you're going to go into this loop of repeated birth and death. The, so the greatest secret of all of this is that the soul itself, by its true nature, is not incurring karma. It's a result of the choices that it has made from all the desires that the karmic reaction is happening. In and itself, the soul doesn't incur any karma. 
And that's what Krishna is telling Arjuna today. If you are not the slayer, then how do you incur karma? Then that person who you slayed or fighting against, he also doesn't have any karma? <laughs> so where this karma thing is coming from? It's coming as a result of the desires, the choices that we made based on the desires and the Supreme Lord is sanctioning. Therefore, how do we choose properly? That's the secret. <laughs> how do we make the right choices? That is Bhagavad Gita. So we see Krishna is saying, Arjun, you are not incurring karma here. You are just illusioned. Because you haven't understood the mechanism of time, you are only seeing time at the level of the body. You are not seeing time on the cosmic level of realization. If you understood time from that level, then you'll understand you are just being illusioned. So that's why again and again we're saying, Om Ajnana Timirandasya, that the spiritual master or the guru removes our illusion of how we're understanding life and from what level we're understanding life. If we only understand it from the level of the body, that's not the complete picture. Just like we see here in this magic video. The world has got some amazing magicians ready to wow everyone with their incredible act. Spanning all the way from the Europe to the Americas, they have performed some amazing magic tricks on talent shows. But the truth is, we are only as blind as we want to be. The first trick. Here's what they did. The person named Marcel first settles down for a night's sleep before all these following horrific things pan out. Just when everyone's wondering what's going to happen, Marcel covers himself with a blanket, and all of a sudden, a woman dressed as a witch appears, thus shocking them all. The rest of the troupe goes on to pull off a dazzling display of magic, in which the witch ignites a fire on the stage. And what do we see? Marcel appears again on the stage, but this time in a yellow-colored dress. But oh no! The witch and his troupe want to kill Marcel. They get a hold of him, put him inside that cage, and wrap the cage around. The cage is then lifted up, and they all go for a kill. They start stabbing the cage with spears with Marcel present inside it. And finally, the cage is burnt on fire. After all this mayhem, Marcel is brought back again in a wonderful scene where he wakes up from his horrifying dream. Amazing, isn't it? But how do they do all this insane stuff? Well, we've figured out the secret, and here's how they did it. To make it easy to understand, we'll divide the performance in three parts. First, the man turning into a witch. Second, getting him back again through the fire. And finally, imprisoning him, stabbing and setting the cage on fire, and then getting him back again. Now, for the first part, how does that fearsome witch appear out of nowhere? Well, the secret lies in that bed, which forms the key part of the trick. If you notice carefully, you'll see the curvature beneath the bed. This implies that there's enough space beneath the bed for a person or two. Also, the bed is designed in such a way that it has a compartment at its back, which can be opened easily to fit a whole person inside it. Now, when did that switch happen? Well, if you see the video footage, there was a moment where this masked man distracted the presenters at the side of the stage. He did this on purpose so they would not let him see the fearsome woman coming out of that secret compartment. However, the camera caught this very moment, and you can see in this particular shot, someone appeared behind Marcel's back hidden under the blanket. Now you must have got it. She's the fearsome witch who came out of that secret compartment, as visible in this scene as she's hidden under the blanket. Now in a very quick time, she exchanges position with Marcel and he quickly gets inside the secret bed compartment. Finally, the fearsome witch is revealed, thus shocking everyone around. Now coming to the second part of the trick. After she was revealed to the audience and everyone who's busy wondering, if you look carefully, her assistants carried that bed and joins it with the platform. The bed is now rotated and positioned on the platform in such a way that the foot of the bed fits on the platform and the platform is now under the bed. Now it's easy. Marcel first emerges out through the secret opening under the bed and gets inside the platform compartment which too has a similar hiding place with enough space to fit a person. 
After playing around some time and making sure everything's sorted, she ignites the stage on fire, thus revealing Marcel to the audience. But there's one catch. What happened to his previous colored clothing? While well, the yellow clothing in which he's wearing was already worn by him from the very start of the trick, which you can make out by observing his collar where you can see a yellow collar under it. Now for the final part. When everyone's busy watching Marcel get attacked, the assistants bring another platform with a cage placed above it. Then you know it, they kick him inside the cage, wraps the cage all around with a black covering until the cage is fully covered. Now the assistants drag the platform next to the bed so that they can take out Marcel from the bottom of the cage and hide it inside the bed compartment. And here's how it was done. During this moment, Marcel gets out of that cage and fits inside the secret compartment underneath the cage platform. Now the assistants suspend the cage in the air, take the platform back, and joins it with the bed. Then they start stabbing the cage with spears. But now you know it. Since the platform is now embedded in the bed, Marcel leaves that platform and goes back inside the bed compartment. And finally, when the bed is covered with a blanket, Marcel comes out of the secret hideout and reappears back in the bed unharmed, much to the panel's amazement. Crushing the Box Illusion First, he gets inside a large box, and the assistants cover the box from above with only the hands of the magician extending out. And now the fun begins. The old man takes a wooden stick, and without warning, he squeezes half the box from the right side, but the magician is still waving his hands. Thereafter, another beautiful woman comes, gets a hold of that wooden stick, and starts squeezing the remaining half of the box, thus crushing everything in the path. But what do we see? The magician makes his appearance from the back of the judges unharmed, thus shocking them all. Now, there are two key secrets which make this illusion possible, and we'll look at both of them. So, how did they crush the magician flat as a pizza? The first secret lies deep within the base of that box. Also, the box is deeper than it appears from the front, and there's a trap door compartment built inside the box, and the left side of the box also has another hiding place. Now, the second secret lies in that stair compartment. Yes, that's a secret staircase. And this is how it all happened. First, the magician gets inside the box, and through that trap door, he hides inside the secret staircase. The staircase is then separated and taken through the backstage. So, this is how he makes his appearance at the end. Now, coming to how the box was crushed, there was another person hidden inside the trap door who gets out, slides his legs inside the trap door at the base of the box, and positions himself with his back hidden inside the left side of the box. Finally, he extends his hands out, which was visible all throughout the trick. So it was all too comfortable for the person inside when the whole box was squeezed, as the synchronization created made it a great illusion to watch. So we just saw in the video how easy it is to be illusioned. And if somebody who is an illusionist, a magician, can trick us, then he can make us feel, make us think and understand that what we're seeing of what he's doing is the reality. <laughs> but in fact, he's just an illusionist. He's just tricking us. So could the reality of life on the bodily level just be an illusion? Wow, that's a big question. <laughs> that's a big question. Is, it, is this just an illusion what I'm seeing on the bodily level? Because we see how easy it is to be fooled and tricked into thinking that what I'm seeing is real. But in fact, what is happening is that our understanding is incomplete. We only seeing it from the bodily level. That's why it's so easy for the illusionist to trick us. But if we see it from the Dira level, from the spiritual platform, then we understand all the levels. Then we understand the whole three levels of how time is working. In that way, we don't get the illusion. Let's see what Prabhupada says. The spirit soul is so small that it is impossible to kill him by any material weapon, as will be evident from subsequent verses. So in the past few verses, Krishna was explaining how the soul is so small that nothing can kill it. And in the future verses coming up, he's also expanding that idea further. Let's see what Prabhupada says here. Nor is the living entity killable. 
because of his spiritual constitution. So we remember Prabhupada made that point that if we are all God, then how did God divide to become the soul? That means if he divided, he's changeable. And if he's changeable, then he can't be spiritual because we know matter changes. So this idea doesn't make sense that God has divided into all of us and we are God. <laughs> and now we're having a material experience and we'll merge back into God. So Prabhupada is saying by nature, God does not become many gods. Otherwise, what is the idea of God being the supreme? Otherwise, what is the idea of making Krishna the supreme? Why not make me the supreme? <laughs> I'm also God. I'm also the same God. I've just divided. <laughs> so he's saying, don't be illusioned. So he's saying that philosophy doesn't make sense. So Prabhupada goes on. What is killed or is supposed to be killed is the body only. So Prabhupada uses the word supposed here, supposed to be killed. So he's saying it's an illusion. It's a magic show. It's an illusion. You believing the illusion. You believing the illusion. Therefore, just like we saw in the magic video, we're seeing that this person is being killed. This person is being stabbed. But we don't realize it's an illusion. We've been tricked because we only seeing from the level of the body. If we see from the higher dimension, from the spiritual platform, then we'll see that this whole thing is staged. <laughs> so let's see what Prabhupada says here. This, however, does not at all encourage killing of the body. Ah, so, pra <laughs> so, Prabhupada, so Prabhupada is saying, hey, 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 don't think now I'm giving you license to kill because, oh, Prabhupada said. <laughs> because just now we may get somebody who get fired up, becomes a terrorist, and then he wants to kill. He's, no, Prabhupada said, you're not the body. <laughs> I'm not telling you this so you can now kill the bodies and this destroy. No, I'm telling you this so you can understand life. I'm telling you this so you can understand the process of life. Power concludes here. The Vedic injunction, Nahisyat Sarva Bhutani, never commit violence to anyone. So he's reinforcing this. This is a Vedic injunction. Never commit violence to anyone. We know Gandhi was famous for this. Hmm? Ahimsa, non-violence. So this is a Vedic injunction. Prabhupada goes on. Nor does understanding that the living entity is not killed encourage animal slaughter. Don't think this is a license to kill animals. Killing the body of anyone without authority is abominable and is punishable by the laws of the state as well as by the laws of the Lord. There's different levels of judiciary. There's the laws of the state. Then there's the highest level, the laws of God. And all have to synchronize. And therefore the Aryan culture or the Vedic culture follows the Vedic injunction because this is the laws given by God so that man can live comfortably in this world with knowledge, understanding how it works. So Prabhupada concludes, Arjuna, however, is being engaged in killing for the principle of religion and not whimsically. So Prabhupada is clarifying this point because Arjuna is a soldier and as a soldier he has to fight. But this level of fighting is happening where? Dharmakshetra, Kurukshetra. It's happening in a separate place where there's no children, where there's no women, where all those who gather there are warriors. And it's a sacred land, Dharmakshetra, Kurukshetra, Samaveda Jujutsava, Mamaka Pandavas Cheva, Kimakurvata Sanjaya, that this is a sacred land. So whoever passes on in warfare here, they'll be liberated to the higher platforms. So you can see it's not the same as uh, one eye Talabani, <laughs> who's now on a mission to destroy everyone in the world. No, no, no. This kind of religious war is completely under Vedic injunction and you can see it by logic.